Hi, my name is Jesse Barnum. I'm president of 360 Works. I'm doing this video demonstration today to show you our new product, 360 Works Safety Net. This is a FileMaker Server plugin that integrates directly with FileMaker Server to do off-site remote backups to uh, uh, file storage on Amazon.com. Uh, and so without further ado, I'm just going to jump into the installation process. So I'm going to jump into FileMaker Server. In, uh, on the Mac, that's in Library, FileMaker Server, Database Server, Extensions. I'm going to copy this plugin into my Extensions directory. And after I copy that over, I'm going to switch to FileMaker Server Admin. It is necessary to stop and start FileMaker Server before plugins will appear. So I'm going to stop it here. And uh, once it starts, I'm going to start it back up. Or once it finishes, I'm going to start it back up. And now I can go into my database server settings. I can enable the safety net plugin. You can't see it on the screen there, but I'm clicking the save button. Um, I skipped one important step. Let me come back and check this box. Enable FileMaker server to use plugins. You have to turn that on to use any server plugins. Now that I've done that, safety net is installed and it's ready to start using. Uh, the, to, to use it, you go into uh, port 8030 in your browser on this computer. This is in the documentation, so you don't have to watch this video again. It's, it's in the documentation file that comes with uh, safety net. So I'm going to go to localhost 8030. I could be on a different computer going to this uh, port as well. I don't have to do it from localhost. So I could administer this from anywhere in the world. Here's the, there's only three screens in safety net. This one is the help screen telling you about how everything works. I'm going to go to the next page, which is admin. For admin page, you enter the same username and password that you normally use to administer FileMaker server. Once I get in there, there's a few very simple setup steps to do. One is configuring your email address. Um, SafetyNet will email you when backups succeed or fail, depending on that notification option there. I'm going to put it in the uh, SMTP server, the email address to use. I'm going to update that. And then there's really um, one step left to do, which is getting an activation key for SafetyNet. Uh, an act, um, SafetyNet is billed through Amazon. The files are stored on Amazon, and so the billing is done through them. I'm going to sign it with my account on Amazon. And you can use your existing account that you already have for Amazon. If you don't have one, you can create one. And then after you sign up, you'll get an activation key. And this is it right here. You just need to copy that and paste it into the SafetyNet admin screen. So I'm going to copy this, go back to SafetyNet, paste it in, I'll hit update, and now SafetyNet is finished with its setup. In the admin page, we have a cost estimator, and you can use that to uh, estimate how much your files will cost based on their size and options. So for examples, we assume 275 megabytes is a typical size, backing up seven nights a week, keeping those backups for seven days, and that those files will compress down to 40% of their original size since SafetyNet automatically compresses files as it transfers them. With those settings, SafetyNet will cost $5 a month. That's based on $0.99 cents, um, base fee plus $1 per month transferred plus $1 per month stored uh, per gigabyte. If we change that to 10 megabytes, which is about the size of my sample files, that comes up to $1.14 per month. We could keep those for 30 days. We could keep them for 90 days. That would be $1.46 per month. So let's go ahead and use that 90-day figure. We'll enter, we'll go up to this setting right here, and we'll tell SafetyNet to keep all these files for 90 days. Okay, that's done. And so now the next thing is let's go to Manage Files. Now I have some files already in here because this is an existing account that I've uh, used with another server. One neat thing to keep in mind with SafetyNet, you can use the same account with many different servers. They'll all back up to the same stored pool, shared pool in Amazon, and then you can restore from any of those servers to any other servers. I want to add the server that I'm on so that it will also back up to SafetyNet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my schedules, uh, my existing daily backup schedule. And before I do, I want to go into the uh, backups um, server, oh, not that folder, the backups folder. And uh, I'm going to and this safety net folder got created automatically when the plugin was installed. Anything that gets put in here will be backed up to safety net. So I just need to change my existing FileMaker server backup script. 
and I'm just going to change where it backs up to. So instead of just backups, I'll go to backups slash safety net. Validate that. That's fine. Uh, and I don't need next. I can just hit finish. Okay. And now anything that gets run in this daily backup script will go into the safety nets folder, which will then be backed up to safety net. So I'm going to run the schedule now. That's finished. And let's go back to, let's look in the safety net folder. And there are the files that just got backed up. So let's see if those get backed up to safety net. There's a, a web-based admin panel here showing you what files are there and when it's going to back up next. We can see this is going to back up next at 1046. Let's, not, let's go ahead and run this now. And so that just triggers it immediately. And it's now um, seen that these files are new in the safety net folder. And it's going to compare each file to the uh, files stored up on safety net on Amazon. Any files that are not uh, on Amazon right now, it's going to compress each one and then use SSL encryption to transfer that up to Amazon. Uh, you can see as it's going, it's compressing these files and then it's writing them to Amazon. And it gives us a nice little status indicator as it goes to show us how, uh, how far through the file it is. Uh, a nice point to make here is that we don't need to schedule anything in SafetyNet. SafetyNet is just running off of the schedules that you have in FileMaker Server. Anything in FileMaker Server that you schedule to go somewhere inside the safety net folder will get backed up uh, uh, automatically within five minutes or when you hit the Run Now button if you want to do it sooner like I did for this demo. So that's done backing up. The next schedule time that it's going to run is at 10.49 and it'll check again that folder to see if it's done. What I want to show you now is the, the email that gets sent out every time a backup finishes. So let's check email. should be coming any second. Let's give it one more check. There it is. We now have a, uh, a notification from SafetyNet telling us that that ran successfully. And it's telling us that it backed up seven items, which were 10.2 megabytes, in just under a minute. And so we'll get this notification every time that the backup runs. If we don't want to get these, we can go into here and change this to just on backup failure and then it will only tell us if there's some problem. So now when we go back to manage files we can see the whole list of all the files that just got backed up. Let's take a look. Here they are. These are all up on Amazon now. And it's very easy to download any of these if we want to. We can just highlight it, download, select it, and that downloads it to our desktop as a FileMaker file. So that's nice. But there's a very cool feature in SafetyNet that I'd rather show you, which is the Restore to FileMaker Server. Let's unselect this file, and um, we'll pick some files, to, just to make it interesting, we'll pick some files that I backed up on my other FileMaker Server. So just to show, the files that are on this server currently are the Business Productivity Toolkit and the sample that comes with FileMaker. I'm going to pick, let's choose my, uh, the Web Services Manager files. That's another product that we have running on that other server. I'm now going to restore them directly to FileMaker Server. This will download the files from SafetyNet and open them in FileMaker Server. I, could e I don't even need to be on the server to do this. I can remotely do this from anywhere in the world. I can restore files from SafetyNet. Um, so it's downloading them. It's going to put them into the FileMaker Server folder. It's going to use the command line tools uh, that come with FileMaker Server to open those files. And to show you that, I'm going to come over here click off the databases and back on. And there are those two files that I just restored from SafetyNet running live on FileMaker Server. So that's SafetyNet in a nutshell. Uh, if you happen to be keeping track, it took about five minutes for me to get that uh, set up and run to do our first backup, and that was with a lot of talking and explanation. So it's a very quick setup to back, um, very quick system to set up, uh, very inexpensive and it's just something that's a fundamental need for any business to have off-site backups and now that's uh, uh, easy and inexpensive with safety net. Again, I'm Jesse Barnum, President of 360 Works. Thanks a lot.